country's unbroken circle. We've all heard it said, who's going to fill their shoes? Who will fill the shoes of the country greats like Hank Williams, Loretta, Dolly, and others? Who comes next to dig even deeper into the country music roots planted by folks like Charlie Pride, Bill Anderson, Grandpa Jones, and more? That's what this series is all about. We've asked the country's family reunion artists to invite those who they feel will walk into the next generation, the singers, the writers, those who understand that at the core of country is the same message, faith, family, real life, real stories. And we think you'll agree that country's future is in good hands. Will the circle be unbroken by and by, Lord, by and by? Welcome to Country's Unbroken Circle. Our visit this time is called Country's Unbroken Circle, and we're talking about the past of country music, the future, and, of course, the present. One guy that's keeping part of the circle unbroken with not only his music but with his wardrobe <laughs> is our buddy Jim Lauderdale. Jim, always great to have you sitting in the circle with us. Talk a little bit about it, because you don't see many people today moving into country music's future that... that have the, the wardrobe, the old uh, Nudie and Manuel type suits, and yet every time I see you performing, that's what you're wearing. Well, I, when I moved out to California uh, back in the 80s, in the mid 80s, I went by Manuel's store, and I wanted, uh, he was very nice, and uh, I tried on a suit, and I said, Manuel, I'm, you know, just, I can't afford any of these, I said, I'll tell you what, you take it and you pay me back when you can. So I did that and I've been doing that ever since. <laughs> still, still doing that. Still paying for the got on. Manuel moved to Nashville several years ago and uh, to he's still. Payment? <laughs> and he's 84, still, yeah. still active, yeah. still making great clothes. And, uh, uh, well, the, why do you think that's important? Because that was kind of the flashy dress of country music, say, in the in the 50s and into the 60s, maybe? That, I just kind of got it in my my head that I really, there was something about it, you know, that really caught my eye. And, and uh, so when I play out, I like to wear that kind of well, stuff. Well, you can't help but feel like a star or a performer when you've got that on, can you? <laughs> it helps. Hey, I need every bit of help I can get. <laughs> <laughs> okay, who, did Manuel make the one you got he on He did, there? yeah. Okay, did he design it? Do you go in and tell him what you want? How do you he, work that? He designed it. Every once in a while, I've conferred with him about things, but... Uh, did he make the shirt, too? The, a lady in England I made this shirt. shirt. Her, her name is Janet Aspley. And she's got a company called Dandy and Rose, and she's got a website. And you, you just she measures you, or you could send her your measurements, and then she has these uh, different fabrics that she can show you samples of. This, they're called Liberty prints, which I don't know much about, but I guess they make them over there in England. And uh, Janet is finishing up her PhD, and her topic was Western style for, you know, Western stage clothes. So she's really, wow, really good. That. Well, I mean, the shirt looks like, surely she saw this suit before she made that shirt because it, they go together she so didn't. well. They she did They just happen wow. to go together. Wow. Yeah. She's yeah. that good. What do you call your music? <laughs> she's a doctor, a rhinestone suit. What do you call your music? Country, Americana, I've, I've heard it referred to as all different things and you've dipped a, a lot into bluegrass. Yes, I started out in bluegrass and um, but just wasn't able to make a go out of it. Um, as a matter of fact though, when I first came to Nashville in 1979, I wanted to hang out with George Jones and Roland White and I didn't get, my roommate was playing at the Opry. He played with Wilma Lee Cooper, several of the guys that were my roommates did. So I got to go to the Opry every weekend, and it was my dream to get to play there someday. And, um, and I met George one night. He would played, but I was just too shy to, you know, say, say, hey, can I 
come over and hang out with you and sing with you. And so I didn't do that, but Roland White was playing at the Station Inn, and I did do that. And uh, I stayed in Nashville for about five months and just wasn't able to get it going as a writer uh, or get a record deal. And, um, but Roland and I did a bluegrass record together, a duet record, and then when I moved, I sent it around all the bluegrass labels and nobody wanted it. You know, they said, you're an unknown, you're not on the circuit. And I, so I got discouraged. It took me 12 years to get a record deal after that, a, a country record deal. And then um, Roland and I both realized when I said, hey, now, now they'll put that record out. And he said, well, you've got it, right? And I said, no, I thought you had it. And so we had lost the master copies. But anyway, his wife found a tape in the bottom of a box. So now that record has come out finally. But, um, but so I, I would have started out more in bluegrass, but um, started making country records and started getting songs covered by other country artists. And um, there is that term they use, Americana, which kind of just means American roots music, basically. So, uh, so I kind of do a little bit. Well, of you that. never dreamed when you were looking at George Jones, you would actually portray George Jones. That's right. I Talk did. about that a little bit. Well, what was that like? You were in, in a play. There was a play about Tammy Wynette called "Stand by Your Man," and uh, we did the show a couple of years at the Ryman in the fall, and it was just so meaningful to get to to play George because I'd heard him so much, you know. And uh, and he came he surprised me and came, I went out to dinner with him and and uh, he said, I'm sorry, we're not gonna be able to come to the show. We're leaving town tomorrow and I know y'all are closing soon. I, but I was kind of relieved because I would have been so nervous. And um uh but it, so he I found out during intermission he he was there. And, so uh, he did see he, it. He did see it. And yeah. It was so nice. And, well, uh, you've got a little George in your voice, and I've seen some facial expressions where you can <laughs> uh, you can look a lot well, like he George. Sure influenced me, and I, you know, I get nervous around, even though, um, you know, y'all have had so much success, and and, but I, I get, I, I just get uh, a little tongue tied around hanging around people that have done so well and, and I've heard your music so much and so but and even though you know like today for instance y'all are the nicest folks in the world couldn't be meet any nicer people but I think that it's just you know it, it after hearing somebody on the radio and watching them perform and and you know hearing other people cover your songs uh, there's just um, I think in, in country music especially, there's this level of respect that you just feel for other Well, other we people. know that you respect it. Keep the circle and okay. and sing us a good song. Okay. Jim Lauderdale, great songwriter, great song stylist. You know, it was one after one of the Larry's Country Diners, we got a call from Nancy Jones. Uh, you said you, you wanted to go hang out at his house. It was one of the most bizarre experiences of my lifetime, so... Nancy said, I got George, he wants to talk to you. And he liked a song that we did on Larry's Country Diner. And he said, when can I get the CD? I said, well, I could bring it to you tomorrow. And he said, okay, come on out to the house. So I got to go to George Jones' house. Me and my, who's my fiddle player and my son-in-law, Hunter Berry. So Hunter and I, we drive out to George's house, the gate opens, we go to the, to the front door, ring the doorbell, and a gentleman uh, answers the door that I later found out was Nancy's brother. And when he opens the door and he hollers, he said, George, your friends are here. He said, come on in. He said, follow me. He, we follow him into George's bedroom. <laughs> George is in the bathroom and we can see George. It's like, uh, he goes, just a minute. <laughs> it's like, I, and so there we are at George Jones's house in his bedroom and he's in the bathroom and it was, a little awkward, I have to say. <laughs> but eventually, he came out of the bathroom, and uh, we got to go sit on the patio for a while. So, <laughs> you know, um, 
top that. Yeah. Uh, well, uh, uh, so if you ever thought well, you wanted to. One <laughs> time, but George um, and Ralph Stanley, I, I knew that Ralph Stanley, when I was pitching songs to him, when I was recording with him, I could tell he wasn't crazy about a song when he would go, you know, Jim, I think you ought to save that for your next record, don't you think so? <laughs> and, and Nancy told me that with George that he would start sucking on his teeth if he didn't like a song. So I was getting ready to do this duet with him, and I was pitching him all this stuff. And um, so he'd sit there and listen for a while and look at the lyric sheet, and then he'd go... And I'd go, yeah, you know that one. Uh, let's not... Uh, yeah, uh, here, here's another one. Um, but, uh, but speaking of George and, and speaking of the unbroken circle in country music, I think that, and this pertains, I think, to, to all of you in here that have already made your mark and that are still making your mark. And that's, that's one of the beautiful things about country music. And as I was sitting here listening to all, it's so interesting you know the the you know hearing you, you folks talk and uh, you know tell stories it is so interesting and there's always something to learn um in country and and this is making me fall deeper in love with country music i'll tell you and i wish you folks at home could hear just you know could be a fly on the wall and hear some of this the conversations going on off camera you know that are just really yeah. We are so lucky, you know. We're kind of glad they can't hear what's going on off camera most of the time. So you could have heard what Jimmy said in the bathroom over there. <laughs> this is, uh, you know, with, with the unbroken circle, I think that sometimes people get turned on to country music through somebody that you know, maybe is in the rock and roll field or something that that does a country record or something like that. You know what? These songs are are good, uh, you know, I'm, I want to find out more about this. And um, there was a fella, this, this song was a tribute to two guys. One, one was George Jones, and the other one was a guy named Graham Parsons, who passed away back in 1973. But I, when I'd moved out to California to kind of be near the California country scene for a while, because um, I love Buck and Merle and those guys, and... Uh, um, I was reading a book about Graham Parsons, and there was a story about how he had a party one time, and he was playing George Jones' records for people who'd never heard him. And he started crying, and he said, that's the king of broken hearts. So as will happen sometimes with, with getting a song idea, you know, you'll read or hear something, and then a song will come out. The king of broken hearts doesn't ask much from his friends And he has quite a few of them They know he will understand That's just the way it goes The king of broken hearts doesn't know he's a king He's trying to forget other things Like some old chilly scene He's walking through alone He talks to angels and the stars start to spear He thinks of troubles that he heart got broken and how it's still that way the king of broken hearts is so sad and wise he can smile while he's crying inside but we know he'll be brave tonight Cause he's a king of broken hearts
it's still that way The king of broken hearts thinks that he's an old fool He's a little bit like me and you So what's a king like that supposed to do with all Oh, that's great. You got everybody smiling and singing along. That's great. And even the broken hearts on your sleeves yeah. there. Oh. And <laughs> hey, speaking, speaking of this band and these singers, I'll tell you why. And you know what? I shouldn't say this on camera, but uh, I'll be honest with you, though. I mean, hey, they're, they're great. They are really... They're great, but um, I don't like them. <laughs> I love them. <laughs> you brought somebody to the show today that yes. uh, is going to help keep country's circle unbroken. Yes, Tell that's me about right. This that's young man. right. Well, this uh, this young man, I he, I'm so impressed with him, and he he's so talented. And he's had so much going on from a very young age also. And uh, gosh, I, 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 he, you know, when, when I was talking about learning things, there's always more to learn. I bet he knows more about who wrote this song, who sang on this record, who the pickers were. And uh, he, he and, and you can, you know, we, we've got such a love for, for country music, and, and he does. And, uh, you know, he's, he's been a student of country music, but he's graduated, <laughs> and he is, he is uh, just doing such great things. And, you know, when I was talking about the rock and roll thing, sometimes finding out secondhand, sometimes the rock and roll artists, you know, love country music so much, and they do their part to help things along and there's a fellow named Jack White who's a big big rock and roll star and he's got a record company called Third Man Records and uh, he heard about Joshua and um, and Joshua's now recording for his label and he's he's just he's playing all over the world and um, I you know a couple of one I know that uh, Charlie McCoy is is uh, on the record, and just when I when Joshua, just looking in his eyes and just feeling the pride he had about talking about it, Charlie McCoy played on my record. You know, I mean that just he you know th this the circle is unbroken, and he's he's carrying it along. Let's. I, I, Let's hear it for Joshua Headley. Joshua Headley. Josh, good to have you here, buddy. How, how did you meet Jim Lauderdale? Uh, I met Jim, I think. I've been playing downtown for a long time, playing at Robert's Western World. And, uh, you know, a lot of people, a lot of musicians who go on the road, when they're not on the road, they play at Robert's. And I met, you know, uh, some guys who played with Jim and Craig Smith and, and uh, Eddie Lang. And, and uh, and uh, Jay Weaver and they're dear friends of mine. I kind of met Jim through them, and then I did the Buddy and Jim show, and we were just hanging out at the American Legion, and you know, yeah, we have just been hanging around each other. Where are you from? Where's your home? Uh, I was born and raised in Naples, Florida. Hotbed of country music. Naples, yeah, yeah, Florida. very. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, What's the significance of Mr. Jukebox on the neck of your guitar there? Uh, Mr. Jukebox is the name of my record, and it's sort of my my nickname, I guess, because um, I grew up playing in country cover bands since I was 10 years old, and um, I learned a lot of songs 
<laughs> and it's Jukebox. kind of crazy to be in here right now, like amongst all of you. Just, I mean, last night I did a Bill Anderson song and a Jeannie Seely song and a Daryl McCall song and a Johnny Lee song and two Gene Watson songs just last night. So it's Thank sort you. of wild to be sitting in here. Well, come up here and do one for all of us. Okay. Of us yeah. Become big fans like everybody else. Oh, yeah, he's great. Joshua Headley. I got to introduce him on the Opry. I'm sorry? I got to introduce him on the Opry, and they loved him like I knew they were going to. We almost missed my intro because we was talking about. <laughs> you weren't supposed to tell that, talk. <laughs> <laughs> I was showing him the ropes. Is all. Uh -huh. you know. <laughs> no wonder he was late. <laughs> all right. Uh, yeah, this one's off my record. I wrote it in Australia after uh, spending a whole day at the beach and then falling asleep in the bed and getting sand in the bed. And that's what inspired this song. Let's take a vacation And fall in love again Go back to where we started When you fell for me back then Fall in love again We can go out to the country Take some time to clear our heads Maybe go on down to Florida Get some sand in the bed As long as we're together I don't care what town we're in Let's take a vacation Fall in love again Well, honey, it's been a long time Since we last fanned the flame And even though it's been forever Feelings for you have never changed. You say your heart's been broken, and that it's hard to love again. Well, we can talk about that later. After our vacation ends. Let's take a vacation And fall in love again Go back to where we started When you fell for me back then Let's 
let's take a vacation You can fall in love again Joshua Headley. Man, that's good. Good song. You sang it great. I don't know about that talking part. <laughs> I, I was just, I was just going hey Bill. That'll I never work. I was just gonna ask you how you rated his recitation skill <laughs> because you're the king of recitation, <laughs> see? I, he talked too loud. <laughs> you gotta learn to whisper, John. Well, no, I'm kidding, that's great, man. I'll do That's great. the next Mrs. Jones. Bring the next. recitation back. Thank you. That, yeah. How am I supposed to do a recitation in front of you? <laughs> you did it great. He's a great That's really fiddle a good player, song. too. Do what, Jim? Really, he's a great fiddle player, too. Well, great fiddle player. <laughs> Gee. I hate talent. He sure got it. He really got it. Look at Johnny Lee sitting on the edge of his chair. He's sitting over yeah, there saying, I'm, I'm next. I'm sitting on the edge of the chair because it takes me an hour and a half to get it from the back of it. <laughs> like well, I'm I... laying down in a daggum hammock or something. <laughs> These things are comfortable. I know, Golly. they're going to swallow me. I didn't say nothing about being comfortable. Now. <laughs> <laughs> it just takes me longer to get up than it used to. Well, now, is the cane, is that a prop or is that... Uh... No, no, I, uh, I started having some problems with my legs, you know. And I went to the uh, doctor, and I said, Mickey Gilly went to Mickey Gilly's doctor, you know? And so he ran a bunch of tests, and, and I just got through some other tests last week. I'm having a problem walking because I did a neuropathy test, you know? And I known how long them needles were. I, I, the doctor said, this is not gonna be fun. And when the doctor says that, or I hate it when the doctor says, this is gonna hurt. Yeah. Most of us, you're gonna feel this pinch or something. This guy said, this ain't gonna be fun. I said, oh crap. So um, they don't know if it's Parkinson's or neuropathy or what. So I'm just using this, just my just in case. <laughs> just in case. Uh, T said, I got a penguin on my arm. I'm starting to walk like one. <laughs> 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 so I, I'm. Uh, they asked me if I've done any research, and I don't want to know nothing about it because I don't believe it's going to get me anyway. You know, right. you're going as long as yes. going as long as I've been going, something got to break sometime. You know. Are you still out touring? Oh yeah, me and Gilly getting it, man. Yeah. Well, how's Gilly doing, by the way? Gilly, who? <laughs> He's doing good. Is he? Yeah, we sold out every show but one. There was eight seats left, and uh, we've been doing it. I don't know if people come to see it because we're not a tribute show, or come to see us because it could be our last time, or come to see us, see if we can still move, or sing, or whatever, you know. We, we're doing it, though, man, you know, yeah. Awesome. I'd pay to see it. Oh, man. I would, too. <laughs> a lot of us would. How about a song? Sure. Johnny Lee. I got this, girl. I got this. I got you to see. I'm going to need that mic stand, though. Shoot, you're doing good. I'm doing real good, yeah. Yeah, you really are. I don't are. know how I'm going to do this. <laughs> Can I, 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 no, no, I, look at Ron DeVince yes. and help me out. Yes. Uh-oh. Uh -oh. How does this work? <laughs> <laughs> oh. What's this button here go. for? Yeah, she doesn't use electricity. Grammy award-winning stagehand. Yeah, that's right. right. What happened? She said Grammy Award winning stage hand. <laughs> <laughs> Is that good word? Yeah, that's good for me. Thank you, Rhonda. Big hand for Rhonda, please. <laughs> Help me, Rhonda. Uh, and I like Emmy, too. She's cool. This, this is a song that uh, I think uh, Tony Raymond wrote this song for George Strait. I want to thank him for not cutting it. <laughs> I put it on my new record, Call You Ain't Never Been to Texas. And on the CD cover, it says, Warning, Real Country Music Inside. Yeah, I love that. And I did a book, to a new book, not a nude book, but a new book <laughs> called Still Looking for Love. And it says in there, when my life flashes before my eyes, it'll be worth watching. And you flip over the first page, it's me holding my new grandson. Aww. So. Uh, it's a great book. I've read it. Oh, have and you? I, I had a... I ended up with a, I mean, I've known you forever yeah. and we've been good friends, but I ended up with a whole new 
admiration for you, and I'll tell you why later on. Okay. What a great book. You, you did you. a great job. Thanks, Bill. And your daughter should be proud, too, and yeah. we'll talk to her later on. Yeah. Okay, well, here it is. <laughs> Fishing that old Frio River Me and Dad on the banks together A Coleman cooler full of Coca-Cola Starting school and graduating My first kiss on my summer vacation First shot of tequila in Reynosa For my eyes, and I'm through rocking, and the lights go down. When that last song is sung, and the white dove flies, and the music's fading, I'm heaven bound. When I'm at the gate, I hope the good Lord waits. A minute before I start knocking When my life flashes before my eyes It'll be worth watching First time I saw her smile Watching you walk down the aisle And the minute the nurse handed you our baby All those familiar faces And all the memories time erases And the places that so always Yet to take me When my life flashes before my eyes And I'm through rocking And the lights go down When that last song I'm heaven bound When I'm at the gate I hope the good Lord waits Just a minute before I start knocking When my life flashes before my eyes It'll be worth watching I'm still going strong I might slow down some but I won't leave a thing undone Till I see my silhouette In the fading sun When my life Flashes before my eyes And I'm through rocking And the lights go down When that last song is sung And the white dove and the music's fate I'm heaven bound When I'm at the gate I hope the good Lord waits A minute before I start knocking When my life flashes before my eyes Well, when my life flashes before my eyes It'll be worth watching. Johnny Lee. Oh. oh, no, 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 no. Thank you. Oh, man. That is Thank so you. good. Thank you, Bill. So very good. Thank you very much. So what... Uh, what, what will be your favorite scene when your life flashes before your eyes? Oh, man. Whew. That's kind of like asking me what my favorite song is. I don't know. I've had so many blessings in my life, you know. I don't know. I probably, I don't know. 
How about that pretty girl? Oh, sitting yeah, back there that'd be one life? of them for sure. That and that pretty little boy she blessed me with. Oh, I love that picture my, in your book oh with man. you and the little boy. My talk, grandson, talk about your, because yeah. you brought your daughter to be, yes, I did. as we're doing Countries on Broken mm -hmm. Circle. Yes. Tell us a little bit about her. Is she seeking a career in the music business? She's an artist. Uh, I guess she is, yeah. She she writes great. She paints. Uh, she has moments of her mother. <laughs> whenever she Go ahead. You can explain that I if know, you want uh, to. Well, well, whenever she gets a little sideways, I say, okay, Charlene. And she's and then she gets it, you know. This year, oh, okay. Dad. Okay, now her mom was Charlene Tilton. Yes, still we is, all still knew, is. Well, still is, yeah. But uh, yes, yeah, still but is. We all knew Charlene her, of course, is, from Dallas. She, she, <laughs> you know these things you get on. You put your feet in and you hang upside down. They're supposed to stretch. You. The inversion table. Yeah, inversion. She fell off. She didn't have her ankle in there, and fell off, and her head hit the floor and broke her neck. She broke her yeah. neck day before really? my birthday. Yep, last week. Yeah, on her birthday last week. Oh my yeah. goodness, is she all right? She well, no, she, she got a broken neck. Yeah, she. The, <laughs> yeah, the, the we didn't shoot her or nothing like that, but yeah. she gonna be okay. She, I guess if she, I know. we don't shoot her. She gonna be all right. She is. Johnny, were you in charge of that? No, no, no. I, I was on. No, I was no. Uh, but if she was any taller though, it, it would might not have broke her neck, you know, because she's about. You know, like that. She was up high, I guess, and fell on it. But anyway, she's a she gonna be miracle. all right. <laughs> yeah, George, come up here. Uh, tell us. I tell met us this. More I about met you. this young lady August the twentieth, nineteen eighty-two. My beautiful daughter, Miss Cherish Lee. Yeah. She'd been doing some writing and some recording, and uh, she had her first record release called Tequila Cowgirl. Hmm. And uh, I love her to death. She's loved my life. And love you, Bear. I love you, Bear. Cherish, are you going to follow into the music, or are you going to uh, you, you do all the other things? The well, art and... I figure I'm a terrible waitress, so I might as well stick with what I'm good at. I'm <laughs> apparently I'm good at writing songs, and I love doing it. So yeah, and uh, this album, Billboard. First of all, I've been in Nashville for just over four years, or just about four years. I met my husband here. We hadn't even been married a month, and it was my first winter in Nashville. And we got snowed in for the week, and I said, well, this is how people get pregnant. Oh. By God. <laughs> now we got Wyatt. Wyatt and Christopher. He's amazing. Um, but I, I recorded this album. I had been stuck in some contractual agreements, and uh, I finally got out of them. <laughs> Thank you. And um, anyways, I had $1,500 to record my album. And everybody was like, girl, I love you, but that can't be done here in Nashville. I said, well, you don't know Cherish Lee, and where there's a will, there's a way. So I recorded this album in the basement of a, a friend of mine's house. He's a drummer, and he produced it. I didn't have time to do it because I was a new mom. And uh, Billboard, I guess they were running out of stuff to write about, but they, they put me on their top country artist to watch for in 2018. Great. So, yes, but how quickly, thank you, but how quickly a year goes by. <laughs> like, uh, that one. So we're already working on the next album and all that good stuff. So maybe I'll be in a, maybe I'll record it upstairs next time. So What song are you going to sing? Well, uh, this next song, I can't look at Dad when, when I do. I don't know. I don't know. You want to sit down? Yeah. Yeah. We'll take him away. Um... Yeah, uh, I lost my brother in 2014 to a heroin overdose. So um, it was, uh, there were lots of songs that were written about it, but um, this one I felt it was important. It's, it's the second single from my album, Tequila Cowgirl. Um, but I, I chose to release it in a, because we felt very alone while we were going through it. And um, it almost tore apart the family. It was, a, it was really earth shattering, truly. Um, but what I found out, unfortunately, after is that we were so far from being alone and it's this crazy epidemic. So I chose, um, you know, if you have a platform, what is it that you're gonna say? So I always thought, you know, the first thing that I'd speak up about would be my, my animals and I'd be marching with all, saving all the animals in the world. 
And uh, I will still go ahead and do that. I've got the name to my animal rescue. And um, my poor husband, I, my theme song with him is But uh, so anyways, but um, right now I'm, you know, there hasn't been uh, a drug program since D.A.R.E. And I figure what a cool thing to go into schools and talk to, uh, you know, the youngsters, the itty bitties, and uh, go up there and say, I'm a musician, I'm covered in tattoos, and drugs are not cool. And uh, go ahead and tell them. Good for you. Yeah. Right. And tell them a little bit about my story and, and the facts. And uh, I'll, have, I'll have all them and the animals. Good for you. You can reach a lot of people. I'm hoping to. Thank you for being here. Look Thank forward you to for hearing having me. Cherish Lee. Bittersweet tonight, I want to breathe it in And never let it go And you're right where you're supposed to be But how was I supposed to watch you leave And never let you go And oh, 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 oh I wish you Forgot to say goodbye And someday I'll know why I'm still a little mad You couldn't wait And I know one day we'll tie the ends We're bound to meet again We'll jump back in Like nothing ever changed And do Guys. That's great. I appreciate it. Not only the performance, but the song is so well written. And, great. and the mission. From a different perspective. 
Yeah. Very Sometimes good. I make it through it without, you know, crying, but it's one of those, uh, it's a shaky ballad. That's what it's been called. It's one of those. Yeah. It's okay. But Were you nervous vision. when you found out your dad was going to write a book? I, no, honestly, I was hoping, I, since I was a little girl, I've always hoped that he would, um, because he's got so many stories. And I remember being little, and I'm trying to, like, clock them all in, just try to hold on to them, you know? So now I got the book. I'm good. It was a great book. And, he, and the thing that impressed me, one of the things that impressed me so much was how kind he was to your mother in talking about Charlene. Well, enough time has gone by. I think so. I, yeah. <laughs> well, sometimes people don't, don't get past that point, but he did, yeah. and he had so many nice things to say about you. Well, If I didn't know better, I'd think he loved you a whole bunch. Well... I'm a product of Vegas. What happens in Vegas stays with you for a very, very long time. <laughs> Remember that, kids. <laughs> Everybody sees my tattoos. They think I'm going to be a whole bunch of fun. I am fun, but really I am a stick in the mud a little bit. Well, Republican, all that good stuff. I'm, yeah, don't, don't go crazy in Vegas. Be mindful of what you do. But, Bill, I just, I really, I really don't want this minute to get by. Please do go on with that mission that you talked about because, yeah. and talking to the kids in the school because it is so sad. I think, I think that almost every family, it's like cancer touches everybody. This addiction problem is just yeah. staggering in our country today, and, and, and I'm you know, so the, glad. I think one of the craziest things for me was that it's no respecter of persons. It doesn't matter what ethnicity, what race, religion, um, economic status, it doesn't matter. You and know? it can happen so quickly. Yeah. That's what so many people don't realize. One night of fun can totally destroy your life not only yours, but your whole family. It so is. I'm so proud of you Thank for, you. that's another thing carrying on the next generation. We got a pretty cool next generation, don't yeah, we? Yeah, we do. Yeah, yeah. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you for being a part of it. Cherish Lee, you. Johnny, you got a lot to be proud of, pal. Uh, T. Graham, you got a tough act to follow. Yeah. Oh, man, is it my turn? Yep. <laughs> you need the time Dang. Uh-oh. <laughs> well... I'll try. That is tough, though. Yeah. Why didn't you, why, why didn't they have you before me? <laughs> they did, and I rewrote the script. <laughs> you know I'm teasing. Uh. I've done shows with Bill Anderson. Do not follow Bill Anderson. No, no, no. I'm tell, ain't that right, Jeannie? That's right. I mean, he's got him right there, yeah, buddy. Exactly right. Thank you. Well, I'm serious, man. I don't want to follow you. Bill, you're, you're very you're kind. Responsible Thank you. For my cookbook. You're responsible for my cookbook, Chef Boyard Lee. I'm responsible for your cookbook? Yes, yeah. Because we, we, yeah, I wrote this cookbook. Uh, there's a fictitious. We got we got to do a show, Bill and I did. And uh, after there signing autographs, Bill got this cookbook called Po Folks. I said, hell, I can, I can do that. So you're responsible for Chef Boy R. Lee. <laughs> well, I hope it's done well for you. It, it, well, uh, it's sponsored by Springer Mountain Farm Chicken. What's your favorite recipe in it? Oh, I can't, that's like ask me what my favorite song is. I don't Elephant know. Stew. Uh, there's, a, there's, a recipe, there's some fictitious recipes. Pretty funny stuff. <laughs> my favorite part of his cookbook in his thank yous, he says, I'd like to thank my daughter. I'm not sure for what. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I had to put her name in there. I don't know. You know, we just, I don't know. Just depends on what I'm in the mood to cook, you know. What's your, like, deer meat? Do you do deer meat? No, oh, fried, I do, fried I do deer spam. meat. Oh, there's that. Beanie weenie. <laughs> no, 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 no. no, no. I, I do deer meat, yeah. Uh, there's, there's a good recipe in there. Uh, Backstrap and piece of onion and jalapeno wrapped in bacon. Grill, you know, with the right spices and stuff. But So these are really a lot of your own recipes? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I give uh, people credit for the ones I get from Deer Camp or from fans, you know, and from the Cajun folks. And uh, and I give everybody credit what credit deserves, but I make up some too, you know. 
Let me see. Let me see. Johnny. Johnny gave me this shark coat. It's a coat with sharks all over it, and I wore it during Shark Week a couple of, about a month or so ago. They love that coat, man. People love that coat. Johnny is one of my best friends. He's a, I wish you could know him like I know him, man. He's a beautiful cat. He really is. Beautiful guy. Uh, this song I'm going to sing, uh, I had the verse, the title in the first verse, and I took it over to Bruce Birch's house. And we finished it up, and I'm so proud of it because I've had the best people in the world cut it. Rhonda and and uh, Jean and George Jones. So I got wow. I got the best singers in town have 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 cut it, and uh, it's called this warning. You is there a solo in this? I can't remember. There's not. Is <laughs> just want to make sure. <laughs> well, kick it off, Wichita. my mind sometime then maybe I'd be free of memories you left behind with every single thought I had This warning you Will I go through my life With only one desire Other arms have held me close But they can't kill the fire This flame inside my heart has never burned so blue. Oh, it's never ending, always there. This one. It's great. Everybody does love each other, and and everybody treats me so well, and I appreciate it. Yeah. Thanks, Stay there. Don't, don't put the mic down. I'll talk to you, man. Number one, did y'all notice did y'all notice him playing his air guitar? Yeah. Oh, well, you know, that's just Gene a Shepherd. habit. That's just a habit. <laughs> I don't cool. even notice it. That's cool. Well, you remember how Gene Shepherd used to yeah, do yeah, that behind, yeah, her, so behind her back? And used those, to yeah. keep, keep time well, with it that way. Bad. Well, you I can't a, help it. <laughs> you brought a pretty good guitar picker with you today. Well, Leroy Parnell and I go back to, I got some pictures when you came over to my house and we were 
messing around out by the pool. This would have been like 1986, something like that. I'm afraid I remember And that. I remember we had a rubber snake, and we were trying to scare each other with it. Something we like go, that. We go back, you know, before Leroy ever had hits, and he's had like 30-something chart <laughs> records and big hits. He's lots of hits. And he's going. you're going to do one of them, ain't you? I believe so. Leroy's a great guy. And man, he can play a slide guitar like, like nothing, man. And he's a great blues guy. I think your last couple of albums or some, I don't know if it's your last couple, but he did a couple of just straight blues albums, didn't you? More or less, leaning more that direction, yeah. I, I suppose. It's always been, as you know, it's always he's from been. Texas. See, we're he confused does. down there. We just, we just like to. Throw it all in yeah. one big uh, gumbo and let it simmer. Yeah, and he and Daryl, he was and Justin, he was loving y'all because it's Texas, you know, and y'all were doing that Texas stuff, and and Leroy was back there saying, "Man, this is the real thing." And it is. Hey, I, so I didn't fan. realize you wrote that song. I love that song. Yeah, oh, well, thank you, yes, thank sir. you, Justin. Um, anyway, God bless y'all. I love you, and here's Leroy Parnell. <laughs> Come on up, man. Up. Okay. Absolutely. Go up there and kill them, Hoss. <laughs> I've got a couple of, i got a room full of heroes here. Right. You notice that Linda Davis was enjoying that Texas stuff, too. I'm yeah, surrounded. Yeah, we got yeah. a few Texans Texas, in the room. Yeah. Gene Watson, yeah. Ray Benson, an adopted Texan anyway. Yeah. Oh, he's a... Renegade right, Pennsylvania, I know. Dwayne, yeah. He don't, that's right, he's a Philly guy. Bunch of, bunch of East Texas uh, people. Close. I'm from West Texas. Anything from Illinois? We went out there one time to East Texas, and I asked my dad, I said, what's that? He said, son, that's a tree. <laughs> a pine tree. <laughs> Roger Miller said one time, he grew up, you know, in West Texas yes. and, and western part of Oklahoma. He said one time it rained about 30 miles from his house, but his daddy wouldn't take him to see it. <laughs> <laughs> That's so funny. Uh, you know, uh, T, it, uh, thank you for inviting well, me. Well, thanks for coming. And uh, when I was, uh, I was living in Austin and uh, trying to make a living, and actually, Johnny Lee, bless his heart, Walked into a nightclub in Dallas where I was playing and listened intently. And after the, the show was over, he said, uh, who wrote those songs? I said, I did. He said, well, send them to me. I might cut one. And he did. He did. He gave me my first cut. Short change. <laughs> he still remembers it, too. I wish I could. <laughs> well, you're a great writer. We've sat in some writing rooms together. We certainly and, uh, have. Never wrote a big hit. But no. We ain't through yet. We ain't done yet. <laughs> That's right. What you going to do? Well, um, and I want to say something about T, if I can, right quick. Uh, as I was uh, contemplating my next move, because uh, I was just kind of stuck in Austin. I couldn't seem to get off the ground. And... I had it. I lo always loved Merle Haggard, and I, I liked to listen to K-Vet, Case, and and uh, and I heard. Uh, I tell it like it used to be on the radio. Was it about eighty four? About eighty five, probably. 85. Yeah. Anyway, when I heard that, I said, "Well, it's blues, it's country, it's all those things that I am. Maybe I've got a shot in Nashville." And uh, he was very instrumental in helping me, and. Uh, I uh, well, you barred deserved, your band a lot. You deserved it, man. Well, thank you. Anyway, this is a song that uh, we still do it every night. It's a love without mercy. Woke up this morning and I knew I'd be Somehow it came as no surprise I saw the way 
she was looking at me I saw no mercy in her eyes She gave me love without mercy Her heart, the one and only Love without mercy And slide guitar. Where's your little? It's in my pocket. We'll get it out. We're gonna, <laughs> we're gonna do uh, the rock, I think, in a, a little in a later minute or on. two. Yeah. Uh, and and. Uh, well, I, I want I want you just to give us a little sample of it. Well, let's be see. looking forward to let's it. Let's see that that one that one over there would be. The, you want to hold this one while I do, <laughs> swap guitar? Oh well, I will. If you or, need somebody here, to. Here, I'll get here. Oh, Eddie you will. are the stage hand, aren't you, Ron? I am. I'm the. I'm the the technical. <laughs> I just want to play this guitar. No, I, I don't know a lot of people who sing and play who do what you do with the, the slide guitar. Now, what is what is the little gizmo there? Explain that. Well, We've got a close-up camera shot on the, that. Uh, in the beginning, um, I used a core seed and bottle. You just soak, soak, soak all the, the, but they changed the the molecular structure of it, and it, it didn't sound the same anymore. So <laughs> they used to use wine bottles and broken beer bottles and everything else. But uh, these are Dunlop slides, and you can buy them just about anywhere. But you can't get them at the Rex Hall drugstore the way you could the. <laughs> 
Yeah. Well, just show a little bit of the effect. Something like yeah. that. Yeah. <laughs> Something like that. Mike, could you play the steel with one of those? Oh, yeah. Huh? Not very well. No. Not very well. <laughs> a, little bit, a little bit different. Say, y'all are going to do a song with the slide guitar? I think guitar so, a T. Are we, are, is yeah, that I think now? It's, uh, no, I think it's a little later a little on. Late. I, always, I just wanted I, you to show that off and give us a chance to get a, a close up on it. Now, now that, th that little gizmo there is not what makes the fuzz tone. The fuzz tone comes out of the guitar That's itself, right? These fuzzy hands of mine. Oh, okay. <laughs> the. the uh, you know, it, it, when I first came to town, uh, a lot of labels wanted to sign me, but they wanted to change everything. I mean, they wanted to ch they wanted me to wear a hat or, and you know, I was raised on a working ranch in West Texas, so I know about a hat. It's you know, I know how to wear a hat, but I wasn't going to wear one on stage. First of all, it was indoors most of the time, and my mother would have knocked it off my head. <laughs> <laughs> but. Uh, at any rate, uh, the slide was something that the label bosses were going, what is that you're doing? Stop it. Would you quit it? And I just, I stuck to my guns on it. And uh, it, it, what ended up happening was this stumbling block became my stepping stone. Yeah. Yeah. Well, good for you, because too many people give in to the record executives and people who want to change them and make them something they're not. Tim Dubois was the reason I was able to do that. He let you be yourself. He just said, just well, he was be a smart the best, man. best Leroy you know how to be. <laughs> well, you are that. Leroy Parnell. Thank y'all very much. And he'll be back. Great band. Thank y'all very much. There's old boy right Who's there. Next? Worn a hat once or twice in his lifetime. Y'all ever heard of a group called Asleep at the Wheel? Yeah. <laughs> You've never heard hey, of it? Hey. You the head oh, man, Ray I'm Benson. On, I'm on, I'm on. Hello, Bill. I think you're on. So good to be here. <laughs> the surprising thing, and it was a surprise to me when I found it out, because everybody associates you with Texas, Texas music, mm -hmm. and you're actually not from Texas, you're from Pennsylvania. Yeah, me and Jeannie Seeley and Joe Bonsall and uh, uh, Del McCory and uh, so many folks are from. Uh, what is that written down the side of your guitar? This says, Western Swing Ain't Dead, It's Asleep at the Wheel. Oh, <laughs> oh, oh that's good. good. That's good. Where's the rest of the group today? They're in a bus on the way to uh, Rocky Mount, Virginia. Nice. And we'll be there tomorrow. And so I had two days off, and y'all asked me to come down here, and here I are. Here I are, and... Well, you can pick and sing without them, can't you? I do, yeah. I've heard you do it. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I, yeah, this is, uh, yeah, it's, in fact, it's uh, one of my favorite things to do is get off that bus. <laughs> uh, we're glad you came by. How about a song from you? All right. Ray Benson from Asleep at the Wheel, without Asleep at the Wheel. It's a long way to get up, you know. Do you find, you say you're going to, to Rocky Mount, Virginia? Yes, sir. Or North Carolina? Virginia. Virginia. Okay, Western, that's not exactly the Western United States, but Western swing music is, is popular All everywhere. over the world. All over, yeah, we've been to Japan, been to, you know, yeah, everywhere, everywhere. And, uh, you know, so a lot of people don't know this, but Leroy Parnell's dad, Roy Parnell, was Bob Will's best friend, I believe. Yeah, many, you know, and... Uh, oh. Uh, it's a great tradition of music, and it's it's why Leroy's the way he is, why we're because it's it's all kinds of music, you know. I grew up playing everything. I played tuba in the marching band. <laughs> yeah. Not a lot of call for that these days. <laughs> yeah. You're going to do a song that fascinates me. Guy Clark wrote this, right? Yeah, this this is one of the great songs ever. Guy was. I met Guy in 1974 at the Willie Nelson uh, picnic in uh, Bryan, Texas, and um, wrote some songs with him, hung out a lot with him, and uh, we lost him last year. And uh, saw him. We were inducted into the uh, Austin City Limits television show. We we're at Austin City Limits Hall of Fame, and uh, uh, Guy came down. He was awful sick, and. Uh, 
he couldn't actually make the show. It was sad, but this is the last time I saw him. And so we were recording a new album, and uh, I said, I'm going to do this song because, uh, you know, you're a songwriter. This is one of those songs. This song Guy wrote, you know, Guy... Oh my gosh, Guy had the, the most beautiful and the most tragic love story of all times with Susanna, his wife. Yeah. But this song <laughs> felt like my life. It's about, it's called the Dublin Blues. It's about a time he was in Dublin. Well, I wish I was in Austin. Uh huh. Uh -huh. At the chili parlor bar, drinking mad dog margaritas and not caring where you are. But here I am in Dublin. Uh huh. Uh -huh. Rolling cigarettes and holding back and choking back the shakes with every breath. So forgive me all my anger, forgive me all my faults. There's no need to forgive me for thinking what I thought. I loved you from the get-go, and I love you till I die. I loved you on the Spanish steps the day you said goodbye. I am just a poor boy uh -huh, uh -huh. Works my middle name If money was the reason Well, I would not be the same I'll stand up and be counted uh -huh, uh -huh. I'll face up to the truth I walk away from trouble, but I can't walk away from you. So forgive me all my anger, forgive me all my faults. There's no need to forgive me for thinking what I thought. I loved you from the get go, and I love you till I die. I loved you. On the Spanish steps the day you said goodbye Fort Worth, uh -huh, uh huh, and I have been to Spain, and I have been too proud to come in out of the rain. And I have seen the David, uh huh, uh -huh. I've seen the Mona Lisa too. And I have heard Doc Watson play Columbus Stockade Blues. So forgive me all my anger, forgive me all my faults. There's no need to forgive me for thinking what I thought. I loved you from the get-go, and I love you till I die. I loved you on the Spanish steps day you said goodbye uh, Now I wish I was in Austin uh -huh, uh -huh. At the chili parlor bar Drinking mad dog margaritas And not caring where you are 
Guy and Susanna. What a song. Yeah, wish I'd written that one. Huh? Great. Yeah, we all Great. wish we had written that one. You know who was cheering the loudest for you in there? Was the lady that <laughs> that you brought today. But she was cheering not because you brought her. She was cheering because she's well, a fan. We're pals, like a whistle. You know, uh, we're Susie Boggus. Susie, so Susie. great to have you here nice for the first time. The Susie, family. Family. Yeah, you know, tell about the first time uh, we met. Uh, it's a great story. Uh, we were playing a fabulous show. It was in Montana. It was Bucks T Ford. Bucks T Ford Truck Stop. <laughs> I just played there. Uh, I wasn't playing at Bucks T. Who else played at Bucks T? Have you played there, Neil? Well, <laughs> we almost stayed there. It is did. a truck we stop. Were right there. It's still there. It's still there. Yeah. It's high. It's highfalutin now. They got a hotel. You know, we had like I think we had about ten piece band at the time or something, and uh, you know we were kind of loud and 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 Everybody the opening loved. act was this lovely singer, Susie. Something, <laughs> and she was acoustic, yeah, in herself, and they basically ignored her and just talked over her whole set and broke beer bottles and stuff. Was, yeah, it was sad. It was I was great. up there singing, <laughs> willing, and then telling them like, "Here's a song I wrote when my boyfriend broke up with me." <laughs> <laughs> can I, can I tell them what you did? What did I did? So. so they literally, you know, it's not, it, there was no chicken wire or anything, but it was that kind of a, a <laughs> crowd. And there were a lot of park employees who they didn't get to go out very often. So they would come out and they wanted to dance and let it loose a little bit because they kind of, you know, had some constrictions in their jobs. And so <laughs> he comes out on the stage to be my hero. And he, I'm, you know, I'm not, I'm not short, but I'm shorter than him. Yeah. And so he comes up to, up to the microphone and he, Leans over and he says, now come on, y'all. She's got to get her gas money. <laughs> <laughs> it saved the day. Well, did so, they shut up and start paying attention at that yeah. point? No, no. <laughs> <laughs> I, just, you know, I just rushed on, uh, did a couple more songs and said, see ya. <laughs> As Pootie has called them, skull archards, you know. I don't know exactly what that means, but uh, <laughs> yeah, you know, but she's a wonderful singer. We uh, we got to work on a whole album. She, of course, she sang uh, a Bob Wills tune with me, and we did a great video with Lyle Love and you and me on that crazy video. And, that was way fun. And then... Uh, we did an album together, a, a jazz swing album. Mm. She's Austin. a good musician. She's a wonderful, wonderful, He is, wonderful, he is amazing, great. though. I, I really feel like sometimes people don't know, first of all, what a musicologist you are. He, he is such a, he knows music inside and out, just all different styles and, you know, so much about many, many different artists. And then he played his tail off. <laughs> I'm saying that in the nicest way possible. <laughs> On, on that record that we did together, it's called Swing, and um, you know it's it's a lot of big band style swing, and boy, I mean he can just just oh, well, play you that know, stuff. You know, you come to Nashville, and, and and I came to Nashville in 1970. To we would go down. Y'all, you'll remember the places I'm talking about. Uh, we'd go down to the Demon's Den, which is now <laughs> I think the Merchants uh, Classy Hotel. <laughs> And um, just get to play with the greatest pickers. And, 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 you know, from Buddy Emmons, who we're, I guess we'll hear about later, who was obviously the greatest, but the great guitar players got to hang out and, and, and sweat that stuff. And, uh, and down on Lower Broadway, uh, right when the Opry left. <laughs> well, Chad Atkins was a big fan of yours. And oh, you God, did yes. some, some work with him, right? Yeah. I mean, I, that's a stamp of approval right oh, there. Oh, man, I'm telling you. I think somewhere along the way, we, you know, we, we must have known each other some other time because we, from the moment we met each other, which was on the Nashville Now show, on Ralph Emery's show, it was my first time to be on there. I was singing at Dollywood, and Dolly had brought us over to sort of say, hey, these are my two lead singers at the park, and it was the very first season ever, you know. And <clears throat> my first time on TV, and Chet was sitting next to me, and so I was very nervous. I was <laughs> bouncing my knees at... Most of you who know me know that I'm sort of um, an excitable type. And uh, so I was doing that, and somebody in the audience had given him a fly swatter, and he smacked me on the knee with it. <laughs> and I just looked at him, and he said, you better settle down, or you're not going to do yourself justice up there singing. Oh. <laughs> and that struck this friendship off. I mean, he was just being honest with me. I needed to calm down. And I did. And then I sang, and it was fine, and everything was good. And 
Then um, a few weeks later, I got a record deal with Capitol, and I got a single out, and I took it over. When I moved back to Nashville after that first season of Dollywood, I took it over to, to Chet's office, and we split a Michelob, and we celebrated, by golly. <laughs> it was a wild night with that half a Michelob, I'll That's tell you. That's why you all played in Austin uh, for a, a TV show, that, and they did a yes. duet. It was just magic. Oh, yeah. This is a voice that uh, it's just oh. the purest voice uh, uh, Susie has. It just uh, I don't it's know. the only. I, hope so. no, uh, I didn't Get say you were pure. Yeah, let's voice see what's, pure. what's there today. <laughs> oh goodness! Well, <laughs> I'm going to already go ahead and make my my apologies because I have been fighting a cold, so I sound uh, I might not sound so pure. If I you know if you go oh my gosh that sounds like Bonnie Tyler. It'll be. <laughs> you want to do that? Thank you, dear. Thank you, thank you. Ray's trying to tell me to exit. <laughs> I don't cough on you. Hello. Oh, oh. yeah, yeah, yeah. Snagglepuss there. Oh, He's doing his best. Snagglepuss exit stage left. <laughs> I, I know so many folks here. It's just so cool to be here with all of you guys and stories singing with T and Linda, you and I were lounge lizards when yes. we first moved to town. Yes. I worked at Tony Roma's and she worked out at the Sheridan and I used to sneak out after my set and go see her sing and go, I don't know, I'm going to have to, I got to learn some of those songs she's singing. <laughs> And then we were on Capitol Records together. That's right, we were on Capitol together. Record Absolutely, mates. that's right. So, uh, Sisters. Well, this is um, awkward, but my buttons are bumping. So I'm... <laughs> buttons, I said, buttons. <laughs> All right. Someday soon, going with him someday soon. My parents cannot stand him because he rides the rodeo. My father says that he will leave me crying. I would follow him right down the roughest road. Someday soon, going with him. Someday soon, but when it comes. So cool, I'd be like a hoot nanny.
Sunday soon Going with him Sunday soon Someday soon Fantastic. There we go, in there. So, Susie Buggs. And I also have to say thanks to the Statler Brothers. When I first started out, they saw me on some show. Um, in I think Florida. It was at the Cook and Chase Florida or something. At the Strawberry got, Festival. Yeah. Our first time we saw you, and then you were on the road with us for a while. That's right, that. like 90 shows. They put me on the road with them for 90 shows and just really, and, you, and taught me all off. about how to be on stage with a band because I'd been. <laughs> you know, solo lounge lizard all those years, so <laughs> it was pretty great. You were awesome. Let's well, thank see. you for being you here. Thank Can you. I ask it's you good one to quick be here. question. Yes. Did you record that before Mo Bandy, or did he record it? After Mo Bandy. You recorded it after yes. Mo Bandy. About 10 years after Mo, Mo Bandy. Much better than Mo Bandy. Oh, <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah, no, no, no. I, that song's been recorded by lots of people through yeah. the years. It's just a classic Ian Tyson it song. Is. And and people associate it with with you and with Mo, but I never I knew think, who recorded yeah, it first. Yeah, and Judy Collins did a really great job with that song, yeah. too. So, yeah. And Ian Tyson did, too. <laughs> <laughs> our show and our visit's called Country's Unbroken Circle. We got a break for uh, the cause here, and we'll have more with Country's Unbroken Circle yes. after this. Thank you, Susan. <laughs>